Hello and welcome to Issue the Hospitals. I'm Pratisha Chaudhary hosting Nursing Education and Training webinar series live on Facebook every Thursday at 3 p.m. bringing for the most interesting topics. Thank you for joining us today. So we bought a great interesting topic for you today as strategies and approaches for investigating patient safety events. So without further delay, let me introduce you to the pros of today's webinar. I take the privilege of welcoming our expert panelists for the day, Dr. Prabhu Vinayagam, so who is a group CEO at Family Mandala Group of Hospitals, Myanmar. And he is also a JCI advisor for Ishoda Group of Hospitals and also a founder of Provident Ventures. Sir is a highly accomplished and resourceful C-level executive with rich experience back to with a Bachelor of MBBS and MAMC and MBA in Marketing and Operations from Singapore. He was the Managing Director of the Joint Commission International Asia Pacific, and he has been instrumental in providing accreditation for almost 80 hospitals in the Asia Pacific region. He's currently the group CEO for Family Mandala Group of Hospitals in Mandala, Mandale, Myanmar. He is also the strategic advisor for JCI to our Ashoda Group of Hospitals in Hyderabad, where he has been advising on the newly constructed 2000 bedded facility at high tech city we welcome you sir Thank you so i'm also happy to introduce our speaker for the day mr kiran kumar senior manager quality with 12 plus years of working experience in hospital and laboratory quality assurance issue the hospital Secunderabad. he is a certified professional in healthcare quality cphq nahq from usa and he did his MPhil in hospital management, also certified as internal assessor in ABH, NABL, and nursing excellence with a backed up Six Sigma LO belt. Welcome you both onto the panels. Uh, like we are really happy to have uh, both, uh, both of you here as an expert one. So let's begin uh, with your talk. Uh, Kiran, so that we need to energize our, our audience with your strategies and approaches for investigating the patient events. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pratisha, for the very brief introduction. So I would like to thank and I'm glad, um, honored to be a, a part of this webinar and um, sharing this platform with uh, most experienced uh, quality and like Dr. Prabhu, sir. Thank you, sir, for being an expert panelist. Thank you so much. So we'll start. Strategies and approaches for investigating patient safety in, uh, events or incidents. This is our today's topic for discussion. So let me uh, tell you in brief about um, quality in healthcare because quality and safety complement each other. So this is one of the uh, very uh, widely spread definition of the quality in healthcare. That is with an uh, acronym called STEEP, S-T-E-E-E-P. So this is actually defined by Institute of Management, Institute of Medicine. So to start with safety, S stands for safe. Avoiding injuries to the patients from the care that is intended to help them. This is the, the main subject of our interest for this today's topic. So, Timely, effectiveness, efficiency, equitability, the patient-centeredness, all together can be considered as quality in healthcare. This is how we can define quality in healthcare. Moving on to the subject of interest. So what do you understand from this? So hope you all had experience by this time, like uh, a lot of tag takeoffs, okay, landings. So we all had uh, that fear of like taking off from these flights and all like, uh, what do you understand? So if you imagine the number of takeoffs, the landings which are happening across the globes per day is closely one lakh. So what could be the risk of someone dying or okay, traveling in an airplane? So the risk was calculated by the aviation industry. The risk would be around one in three million. Can you imagine the, the risk which is calculated healthcare? Why I'm trying to uh, relate healthcare with the aviation industry, both are related to service industries. 
can anyone imagine about this uh, what could be the risk in healthcare it is one in 300 patients one in 300 patients will have high risk of having a death let me talk about some of the facts okay figures which is given by who we all agree that patient safety is a serious global health concern if you believe like one in 10 patients may be harmed while receiving hospital care there are a lot of adverse events surprisingly 50 percent of the total expenditure is directly result from adverse events which are happening in and around in healthcare delivery so let me define what is a patient safety event or an incident so patient safety incidents or events are unintended unexpected incident which could have or did or led to the harm for one or more patients receiving the health care. So these patient safety incidents are classified into near miss, no harm, harm. Further, these harm incidents are classified into mild, moderate, severe, and death based upon the severity of the incidents. Let me talk about little bit of little bit about near miss incident. Like what could be a near, near miss incident? I'll give you an example here. A unit of blood being connected to the wrong patient's intravenous line, but the error was detected before the transfusion started. It is nothing but there was a barrier which has caught before the incident reaching to the patient. This is considered as near miss because here the harm has not reached to the patient. Near miss incidents. No harm. Example, doctor has advised X-ray for the right leg, but DMO wrote and requisition as X-ray left leg and has done it. Here, the harm has reached to the patient, but certainly harm may exist, harm may appear later, okay? And harm incidents. Patient has underwent a PTCA through a femoral root and developed a bleeding and slight hematoma at the femoral root. This was a harm incident. This Incident has reached the patient and patient had a harm. And severity is not that much. However, okay, some intervention might be required. An example two on this harm level incidents, patient came for a master health checkup. After urine sample collection, patient felt giddiness. They became unresponsive. The patient was required to shift it to emergency department. This is a severe incident. So this is how we, we are required to classify the incidents, patient safety incidents for further root cause analysis. How incidents happen? Any idea? Oh, cheese block. Looks nice. Okay. So why this guy is showing this cheese block soon after the lunch? Sorry. So this uh, cheese block, if you see in this image, a lot of holes in it. What do you understand from this? Okay, let me explain. This is a Swiss cheese model of causation of incident. Okay, this is a very widely spread model, which has been actually derived okay, to explain about causation of incidents, how the incidents may reach patients. If you see in this, see, if you see in this image, there are layers of cheese blocks. One, two, three, four. And you see some holes in it. These holes are nothing but which represents latent conditions and active errors. The latent conditions are nothing but the gaps, the deficiencies, which are already there in the systems and the processes, which has led the incident to happen from. Okay, active errors, which are active, which are present during the incident. So together, these active errors and the latent conditions will result in having a leading an incident to happen it's nothing but patient safety incident. See this example in another picture. See, we always tend to jump into the conclusion. Okay, we always look for the symptoms. Okay, we always tend to take corrective action for the symptoms only. Now, when you act, taking action only on the symptoms, you will miss the opportunity of okay, identifying the root of the exact incident, why it has happened. So that eventually leads to a patient safety incident to happen. So that's the reason the whole motto of this entire uh, discussion of the webinar topic to discuss more on what are the approaches 
and what are the strategies which we all can adopt to prevent these patient safety incidents to happen in future. That is what, is what preventive and corrective actions. So, so what are the common causes? Like we all think about root cause analysis because we get instructions from our medical heads and all when some uh, incident has happened, nursing HRE, nursing uh, GM nursing, they ask us to do root cause analysis. We tend, we jump into conclusion, identifying the root cause was done. So what well, the root cause was newly joined staff, isn't it? We all like the most common reason which we identify whenever this incident is happened, we, 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 we tend to say that she's a newly joined staff. There is a reason incident has happened. Neither. We're busy with work. Overburdened. Not aware. We are not aware of it. She's not aware of it. Not trained. Do you think that these are the root cause analysis? These are the root causes for an incident to happen? Probably not. We just tend to address only the symptoms of the particular event or incident, not trying to identify what exactly the root or cause of the incident. So this is the definition of the root cause analysis, which is given by the safety culture. Uh, one of the relevant uh, examples related to healthcare with respect to root cause analysis, RCA, nothing but root cause analysis. It is a process of identifying the source of the problem, looking for a solution and treat at the root level. This is what about root cause analysis, which organizations, healthcare professionals require to work on. So let us all talk about some of the strategies. As I mentioned about some of the strategies, which you all can work on to prevent such kind of incidents and to do a root cause analysis. What all strategies can we adopt at our hospitals? First and foremost is develop a framework. It's the most important part. So having a robust incident reporting system will make a lot of difference. Define what all incidents you are having. Okay, escalate, create an escalation matrix. Who all will act upon whenever there's an incident? Okay, or if there's a transmission incident, maybe you're probably a transmission medicine consultant should act it. If there's a reporting error, probably a driver or lab manager should act it. Define that escalation matrix. Next, have applications. See, we have revolved over a period of time. If you see like nursing, so we call as nursing heads. After that, nursing superintendents. Now we become GM, GM nursing. So over a period of time, we have evolved in a lot of actually applications. Slowly, many hospitals are moving on from hard bound to hard copy of incident reporting to, and they're moving on to the applications and modules. Having Excel data, which turns information, which turns data into information, information into innovation. So have applications in place. The most importantly, training. Training plays a vital role. The whatever the incidents which are actually happening in and around, inculcate them in your routine trainings. That is the most important, which we all miss out. We show them the real-time examples, real-time incidents. So to connect with them, so inculcate these all incidents, whatever the learnings we had. So in this training curriculum, we might identify a champion. Next is identify a champion. A lot of will make a lot of difference. Okay. So patient safety nurse as a as a champion, okay, will definitely drive this entire program. And incident review committee. Having a committee will definitely actually will yield results because over a period of time, we'll we all sit together, we'll see the trends of incidents, how it is happening, how many number of pressure ulcers we have, how many number of incidents related to restraints. So if you see the trends and review in the committees where we have multidisciplinary people sitting over there and discuss on those trends and all analysis, take proper corrective and preventive action. Last but not least, safety culture. This is the most important thing which organizations need to adopt blame free culture non punitive culture okay never ever try to blame someone because the incident has happened because of him or her she was involved in that incident all incident 80% of the incidents which happened because of the lapses in the processes and the systems it's not because of the individuals so what do you understand with this picture this was in 2015, no? where the Bahubali has released, okay? Just from the internet, like when the movie has released, became a huge hit. And after that, like, like 
many people actually started searching for it. Like, what does it mean? What do you understand from it? Why Kattappa kill Bahubali? Why? Because Shivagami has ordered him to kill Bahubali. Isn't it the reason? No. I say no. Why? Because Shivagami is ordered, but Shivagami is ordered to kill Bahubali. But the reason behind is his husband and his son pretended saying that someone is killing them. That is the reason. They took this decision. Okay. So is that a reason? No. Why they have to pretend it? Because Balala Deva by that time is already a king. Why he has to pretend? The reason behind was Deva Sena during a ceremony, she has told, she has even challenged Shivagami saying that I will ensure that my husband will become a king of this kingdom. That made Balala Deva to become more insecure about his position. So what has led to this incident to happen? Why Kattapa killed the Balmuri? It is the cat fight between two women which had led that Kattapa killed Bahubali. So why? The uh, jokes apart. So why I'm trying to tell is we always tend to Okay, jump into conclusion, identifying the symptoms, working on only the symptoms and acting on those symptoms rather than identifying the root of the incident. Let us talk about approaches as we have the topic of interest. What are the approaches we all can adopt, which has widely spread, which is being used? Five ways. The very easy and the most effective tool and approach which you all can use in analyzing the incidents, in investigating the incidents. Let us see how you can construct it, okay? How you can work on it. Gather a group of interpersonal stakeholders who are familiar with the problem or event you are exploring. See, always we work in isolation. We work in isolation. We see every incident an isolated event, okay? Only like, only the very limited people we work on incidents, always, Ensure that the who are those who are all involved in the incident, who are those who witness the incident, who are stakeholders of the incident should be involved in actually gathering the information related to the problem or an event. Clearly define the problem or event in clean, plain language. This is the most important. This is an incident which has written like I mean, a medication error has happened. What does it mean? Why it has happened? When it has happened? Who all involved in it? Make it as a proper statement. Always see that as a pattern because every incident, as I've seen in the earlier slides, which will breach every layer, okay, then the incident, let the incident to happen. So always see that problem as a pattern. Ask for five times, as I mentioned in the previous example, why cut the kill Bahubali? So five times at least, because most of the time, the first why only will try to identify and take an action, but identify the root cause. Sometimes you'll end up identifying the root cause in the third way also. Sometimes maybe it goes on six, seven. So this is the best approach in identifying okay, the root cause of the problem. Explore the best way to solve the problem. Okay. Ensure that it does not happen again. This is the motto. Okay. To take a corrective and preventive action. So let us look at one incident which I would like to discuss with you all. Okay, uh, a simple incident. So we we all might have come across a patient received a wrong medication. Okay, why did the patient receive a wrong medication? Any guess? Okay, the nurse did not complete patient identification. Why did the nurse did not complete identification? The second why? Because the patient didn't have a wristband. Okay, why did the patient not have a wristband? The wristband had been removed after a procedure. It has not been replaced. The patient has undergone for a surgery. Why was the wristband was not replaced? There was a shortage. Printer was not available around to take the prints of wristband. But the stock is not available. Why was the printer not working? Because understaffed. IT's team is understaffed. They've been actually overworking, not able to address the solution. See, this is a classical example we all need to understand. We always tend to work on this. We always sensitize nurses, train nurses, probably if you're taking an exam, 
uh, explanation letter, level warning letter, we show them or sensitizing in the time. Not a not try to identify the the root cause why this incident has happened. So I request you all to adopt this uh, five Y analysis approach, which is very easy and effective in identifying the exact root cause of the any problem or investigation, any problem or any event. So moving on to another approach, which you all discussed today, cause and effect. Is there any other name which we have? Because we all are very much familiar with this cause and effect. We call it as simply fishbone, Ishikawa, isn't it or not? So the cause and effect diagram, we call it as a fishbone diagram. We call it as Ishikawa, okay? So these are an effective, okay, and the most important okay, an approach in identifying the root cause of the problem, or we have a set of problems we had. So one common approach, because we all actually tend to make a diagram, then we start actually uh, putting some categories and headings and all. So I request you all to not do that. Let us formulate a team. I'm not expecting someone like 10 members to actually join for this brainstorming, at least three members who are all stakeholders of that particular issue or a problem or an event. Brainstorm, or if you cannot brainstorm, brain writing, okay? So one um, tendency that like someone actually had an idea, we always suppress them, like because, so never have that actually attitude, okay? Let the people come up with their ideas, jot down the ideas one by one, then, okay, probably you'll end up with having like, these are the reasons could let to the incident happen. You might have identified these are the reasons which are led to happen. Then have an approach. This is also an approach or a tool, a multi-voting technique. Put them, put them in order, okay? Have a multi-voting. Take opinion from individuals, like which is the contributing factor, which could, which cause would lead to this incident or error to happen, which is the most common contributor, contributing factor. So these are the two approaches I request you all to perform in doing the cause and effect. Let us see one example, how well we can do, how well we can construct this cause and effect to diagram or a fishbone diagram. First of all, you need a effect. See, probably it could be a medication error. It could be maybe a wrong sample collection or it could be a patient fall. You might be having some problem which is hampering your process. Identify the effect, that is nothing but effect. What could be the causes? Then draw a line, horizontal line. Okay, probably the spine of the bone, fish bone. Then have these spikes, which is coming out from the spine, like a fish bone. I identify, categorize them. See, there's a tendency that we all should use only five M's, five P's, and all. There's no nothing like that. You can have your own categories. Ensure that the process, people, environment. These all been addressed. So here, if you look at this example, accidental removal of catheters and tubes. So the one common category is working together as a team. So the reasons could be the causes are the lack of ongoing training because of high workload, lack of supervision or monitoring because of high workload, environment, inadequate NP ratio, technology or procedure, lack of sedation protocols, which has led to the incident to happen. Organization could be, there's no review mechanism available at present on reviewing the patient safety incidents. Individual staff with little and prior experience who was handling a critical care patients, which had led to some accidental removal of patients, accidental removal of catheters and tubes. Patients, there are patient related factors which are contributing. Sometimes it is very difficult to address agitated patients and neurological alterations. Patients with high demand for special care. So this is how you all require to work on if there's any problem. So always I suggest having a multidisciplinary team, do a brainstorming, okay? Jot all the ideas, okay? Categorize them, okay? Dr drill down and try to actually come to an assumption or conclusion, okay? This cause would have led to this effect to happen. These are the contributing factor for this problem or an event. Okay, thank you all.
thanks for your patience listening uh, probably i'll uh, switch over to pratyusha pratyusha yeah. will take over for the q and a session thank you so much for your patience listening thank you so much uh, kiran for uh, a crisp and detailed presentation for energizing our audience too with your humor of uh, bahubali bringing in the bahubali and all so thank you so much uh, we welcome our prabhu sir on to the board for uh, our expert panelists discussion so welcome sir thank you sir what do you think like uh, our current approaches to root cause analysis is it contributing to our failure to improve the patient safety is it that um <clears throat> yeah so so the root cause analysis is actually a scientific methodology unfortunately most of our healthcare staff are not trained on how to conduct a root cause root cause analysis and this is a this is a process which is typically done in manufacturing segment mm -hmm. where it, because when you make a quality manufacturing product you don't want any kind of defect to go into the market because that brings down the reputation of the manufacturer so root cause was used first time in a manufacturing uh, line why it has come down to healthcare because the process and science is similar the kind of root causes that we do in our hospitals is because since we do not know the science behind it we tend to attribute factors and as kiran had very clearly mentioned that there is a process to do it you need to form a team you need to have people who are involved in it if we don't do that then your question is absolutely right the root cause analysis by itself is a problem for patient safety yes so beyond this uh, like find and fix how can we improve this quality and uh, bring in the resilience in the healthcare systems well at the moment since we do not have any background data find and fix is the only way that we can go forward and do it but as we start accumulating data over a period of time and the good thing is that yashoda has now started using quality software to track your data so the more and more you will track your data futuristically you can have the data mining and able to predict failures and that concept is called failure mode effects analysis it's called fmea so when you are able to predict your failures you will be able to prevent it currently we are not able to predict it and hence we are working on a fix and find and fix mode yes. so the more more and more data we will get we will be able to predict it and if you are able to predict it then we will be able to prevent it sir as this ai system like artificial intelligence is being explored uh, do we have any applications as ashoda is trying to have one of it so like it's a application based so do we have any uh, application supporting to this uh, improving the quality standards and all so the artificial intelligence the way it works is based on huge amount of data gathered over a period of time artificial intelligence is nothing but data mining which is happening on the background mm -hmm. and predicting it over a period of time so artificial intelligence currently if you look at is able to predict in 95 to 96% of the cases very correctly currently because since we don't have data at all so in order for artificial intelligence to apply right. you need to have humongous amount of data to get it to as close as possible but since we are starting on the journey it will take a lot of time for us to have the data in place and then do the data mining and then ensure uh, that we are able to make an application but if you ask are there artificial applications available in the market yes there are there are enough applications available can you name uh, any one or two sir um it, that doesn't come on the top of the mind but it's all on quality management softwares uh which is which is quite commonly i mean google it out and we can we can get to that okay. i think up to date is one uh, ai based application up to date great okay great apart from this what might be the challenges that we commonly face to investigate or to approach or having all the strategies apart so where are the main challenges that we find uh, for the nurses especially to understand the root cause analysis so if if i am the nurse i would be very much afraid to report it because because uh, i am afraid that i will be put into a problem i will be put into a situation i will be questioned without even trying to find out whether i was at wrong or not i will be squarely blamed for the pro the mistake that would have happened and even before somebody else blames i would probably be blaming myself first 
that it is a mistake that has happened because of me without realizing that most of these incidents happen not because of human error it's because of process errors and if management and the supervisors do not think that it is a process error then they will always be blaming people for it and people are not responsible for it yes sir so and uh, in case if you wanted to say like how to work out on the wrong side blocks as we are talking about this uh, as we talk about so many approaches strategies all this and the uh, keeping the systems uh, means there is a system approach which needs to be followed but as if now the wrong wrong side blocks can be taken out by using some of the approaches what might be the best approach that we can do commonly how do you what do you how do you define wrong side blocks um like uh, in case if there is a um kind of like if if there is a system uh, system error that which we have uh, uh, spoke about just in between okay. like got if it is I a got yeah i got i got so um, see any system error if needs to be corrected it cannot be corrected by somebody working in silos when you if if you if you think that nursing department has a problem then it cannot be solved by nursing department it needs to have a system wide approach if there is a problem in quality which i keep saying that it is not the responsibility of the quality team to correct it the quality team is there to help you correct it they cannot correct it by themselves because end of the day the problem is happening in the nursing department if the nursing and quality don't work together it will never be solved because nursing will not be able to solve it and the quality will always think that the nursing has solved it the nursing will say it's the job of the quality so the the blocks are in our cells and healthcare is a horizontal work process a patient comes into the hospital he moves into the hospital horizontally now he comes let's say he comes into the emergency he gets an investigation done then he gets admitted into operating room then he goes to the theater then he gets discharged goes into the icu from the icu he gets discharged into a room and then he gets discharged in the hospital but hospitals work in verticals yes. emergency is a separate department icu is a separate department theater is a separate department so you see the problem where it exists there is no system connect if all of them do not come together and discuss the problems because it's a system problem it's not a departmental problem so lab works on a completely different department where they don't interact with other departments so this is where the failure and these are the wrong side of the blocks so that is why an integrated committee is getting for gets formed you know when you bring in a committee you get representative from each department so that you are able to correct an integrated approach to a systemic problem great so according to you the top notch stat strategies and approaches for investigating the patient safety events and what could be your take home message that you want to give for the nurses especially ah uh, well for the nurses uh, you are the front end of the patient for any hospital if the patient is going to come back to the hospital it is because of the nurses and therefore the nurses should themselves have that confidence first of all to ensure that the hospital functions because of their hard work and and they therefore they should even be they should be even more careful to ensure that their image is not spoiled and therefore follow processes have the strength to stand up and question have the strength to correct errors participate in meetings discuss with people if you're not able to understand ask for people and that's how a nursing community can grow much faster i would rather say that the nursing community should stand up for itself and fight for itself and therefore provide better patient care for every hospital thank you so much sir and uh, kiran do you have any points that you want to add on as rightly said like having said that uh, uh, we always tend to actually uh, look into the uh, symptoms like uh, try addressing all the symptoms rather than addressing at system level at process level so as rightly said like uh, dr prabhu vinayakan has rightly said so uh, the, the most tendency like uh, uh, what we are uh, we been seeing in, in our career is uh, usually like nurses will be blamed or they will be trained for some other other reason or uh, we take explanation letters or warning letters and all that never solve any uh, of your 
patient safety incidents or events. Always, as I have been said that, okay, have a, a robust framework, okay, have an uh, incident reporting system, which is need to be established, okay, that is very much important in any organization to understand what kind of incidents they are having, like what are the common trends, and uh, further we can use it for analysis. Great. Um, thank you, sir. I think the uh, strategies and approaches uh, will not stop here. There, there are so many uh, things that we have to follow in the process. And it's not only one department, like we have to have the handholding of all the other departments also together. Horizontally, as you said, like we have to take everybody uh, together and then we can make a standard system or a process to follow so that we can understand where the failure exactly happened. So that we can uh, see that the safety standards can be improved and the quality assurance always be marked there. So that's for today audience, like uh, we're really happy to have this great discussion. So hope you also have enjoyed the sessions and hope you, the upcoming sessions are also really interesting that you, which has been marked according to your uh, top notch, uh, the topics which you have been uh, wanted, always been most wanted. The things like uh, make sure that you will be stay tuned to issue the hospital's Facebook page for the further updates. We're also coming up with the most interesting quiz and also the topics and also the panel discussions like this for the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.